the civilization nowadays pushes you to learn technology, not Sanskrit, not the Upanishads, not these. So the pressure is so much. Uh, in my house, it was okay. You should become an engineer. So, but somehow, by the Lord's grace, by Prabhupada, our Guru's grace, we were pulled away from the technology, uh, the mundane thing, to serving the Lord. So, somehow, in spite of me being not so qualified in the sense of uh, scholarly attributes, but because having learned from Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, from Prabhupada, we wish to present simple some topics about Chaitanya and his philosophy in this paper. So, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu appeared in 1486. He came in Bengal and he was accompanied by many associates. Some of his chief associates were Nityananda, Advaita, Haridas Thakur, Galadhar Pandit and Srivas. These were all his contemporaries. He came and he spread these teachings of uh, Gaudiya Vaishnavism all over India. He, in fact, he you can call him as a revolutionary who inculcated bhakti movement in every kunuk and corner of India. He spread the chanting of the holy names of Lord Krishna and he was instrumental in heralding a golden age in this age of Kali. He lived actually for 48 years. In the first 24 years, he was in Bengal and the next six years, he traveled all over India on foot from Bengal down the way to Kanyakumari to the Badrikashram back and forth, Vrindavan. He traveled everywhere and he made lots of disciples, devotees. He, he made disciples of very scholarly nature, of very uh, erudite, very high class who were ministers. So some of his chief disciples were six Goswamis, that is Rupa, Rupa Gopaswami, Sanatana Goswami, uh, Raghunatha Bhatta Goswami, Raghunatha Dasa Goswami, Sri Jiva Goswami and Gopala Bhatta Goswami. Gopala Bhatta actually was a son of a priest in the Sri Rangam temple. When Chaitanya Mahaprabhu came down to south, he was influenced by him and he became his disciple and he later on stayed in Vrindavan. All these great disciples, even the chief disciples, six of them, six Goswamis, and there were many others, other disciples who actually, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu himself did not write personally scriptures or books. Only thing that he left behind was eight verses called the Shikshashtakam. But all his teachings were rooted in the Vedic literatures. He uh, went on uh, extensively discussing with not just with general scholars, with devotees, he had discussions with Advaiti school philosophers, he had discussions with Buddhists, he had discussions with ministers. In fact, he was able to convert those people also to the uh, Bhakti movement by his message. In fact, uh, there is a whole discussion of with Saravam Bhattacharya, who was a great uh, priest and a Shankara follower in Puri. And that forms a very major portion of one of the biographies, like I have mentioned, like the, we were translated that into Kannada, the Chaitanya Charitamrita, so written by Srila Krishna Sakagaraja Goswami. He wrote this uh, Chaitanya Charitamrita at the right page of 92. This consists of about 18,000 verses in Bengali, which are in the form of couplets. And in this Chaitanya Charitamrita, he documents all the discussions in detail, which he had with many scholars. He, do, he documents especially the discussion of with Savabha Bhattacharya. And also he documents a discussion with uh, great renunciant and monks in of the Varnasi, Sri Prakashana Saraswati. Prakashana Saraswati was a very big, big sannyasi who had about 6,000 disciples, 60,000 disciples in Varanasi. So with him, he had a very elaborate discussion. That also is documented in Chaitanya Charitamrita. So based on this, on this Chaitanya Charitamrita, we can try to understand where the roots of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's teachings came from. Like already said, broadly, it was from the entire Shruti and Smriti. 
and it was not just, in fact, he was criticized when he was in Varanasi. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was criticized because, like I said, he spread the chanting of holy names. A lot of people were chanting, he would chant and dance, Hare Krishna mantra everywhere. So many people criticized him. What is this? You are a sannyasi, you should be a uh, Vedantist, you should sit and discuss. Uh, so, but Chaitanya Mahaprabhu actually gave this whole concept. Actually, he brought the Vedanta into practical action. Vedanta is just not an armchair discussion of philosophy, but it's the way you live a life also. So, he brought that life by bhakti, by total surrender to Lord. So, in this short paper which I am going to present, I would like to sh share that the root of these teachings of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, which are in the biography, based on the discussions in Chaitanya Charitamrita, given in Chaitanya Charitamrita. There are many tenets of the philosophy, of course. It will very, in a short period like this, it will be very difficult to discuss that. Uh, the entire philosophy of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. But some aspects where we can actually trace the roots to Upanishads. So I am trying to uh, put before you, before all of you, how the Chaitanya's philosophy is entwined and with the entire fabric is at Upanishads and Shrutis, basically Shrutis. So, the first aspect would be, I would say about broadly, I divided these uh, tenets of the philosophy of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu uh, into about eight tenets, I would say. But out of that, I'll just take about, because of paucity of time, I'll take about maybe four or five. One of that is, of course, is universal to all uh, systems of philosophy which is there. That is, surrender to the bone of a spiritual master. Right? So, uh, even all of us know, in all schools, whether it be Advaitis, whether it be Vishrita Advaitis, all schools of philosophy, except that yes, acceptance of the spiritual master is fundamental. So, whereas in Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu also accepted that. As we know, I would like to quote a specific verse from Shvetashvata Upanishad. Yasya deve para bhakti yatha deve tata guru so only onto those great souls who have implicit faith in both the Lord and the spiritual master are all the imports of Vedic knowledge automatically revealed. This is from the Shvetashara Upanishad. And one more particular verse from the Mundaka Upanishad I would like to quote here. Tadvignanartam sagurum evabhighachet. Please note this, evabhighachet. So this is a Vidalin verb is specifically saying you should there is no question of may no there is no may here you should that's what is the why that abhigachet is coming here so samit what is that samit pani shrotiyam brahmanishtam here chaitanya mahaprabhu in his own life for that example he was a very great scholar in fact when his in his youth when uh, a big keshava kashmiri a pandit came to Naudvip, Naudvip is the place where Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was staying. He was a big Sanskrit scholar who was a Dibhijayi, who would defeat everybody uh, so many places and he would travel. So he came to uh, the Naudvip and many people, many Pandits were scared because he would defeat them and he would be subjugating them. So what happened, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu at that time was known, you know, Nimai, Nimai Pandit. So he was a very profound scholar then. So they all of them put him in front because he was anyway very young, that time he was only 16 years. So Chaitanya Mahaprabhu uh, challenged this Keshav Kashmiri and this Keshav Kashmiri composed 100 verses in glorification of Ganga within just a, a sec, few seconds. And he composed it and delivered it very nicely. And Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, what he did was, he said this particular verse in between, he quoted a 64th verse, if my memory is right, yeah. So he said there are a lot of problems in the 64th verse of yours. He, he spoke like a wind that in that he took out one particular shloka and said this is the grammatical mistake in this particular verse. So Chaitanya Mahaprabhu pointed out that Bhavani Bharthu, there is a particular usage made in the Sanskrit. So Chaitanya Mahaprabhu said oh, this is not correct. So Chekesha Kashmiri was defeated. So in spite of being such a big scholar, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was a very big scholar in that sense, he said that you know, uh, Guru Sama Murukha Haya means I am just a fool. I should be a fool before the spiritual master. In various scriptures, if you refer, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is actually proven to be the incarnation of Krishna who took the mode of uh, 
bhakti of Radharani and came to show how one can be a great devotee of Krishna. Still, he accepted his spiritual master. He accepted Vishwara Puri, who was a uh, great sannyasi in the line of the Gaudiya Vaishnavas, to as a spiritual master. So, showing us that spiritual master, accepting a spiritual master is fundamental. This also is coming again from Upanishads, I can say. Right? Human form of life. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu said, he prayed to everybody, said, everybody, please don't misuse this form of human form of life. You are supposed to understand the intricacies of Krishna, understand how you can enjoy spiritual life, not just be blind and go into mundane pursuits of sensual enjoyment. So this was the fundamental teaching of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, which is there in Kata Upanishad. Uh, and there is a particular verse in Pradharanika Upanishad, which explains who is a Brahmana and who is a Kripana. So it says, Yo va etat aksharam gargi avidas malmat loka praiti sa kripana. Huh? So one who is a kripana, in English, if you translate that, kripana means one who is a miser. So just like somebody has lakhs of rupees in his, in his pocket but he doesn't spend to enjoy, then he is a miser. So that such a person is a kripana. So just as we are all given this wonderful human body through which uh, it's like a Boat which can cross this material energy uh, energy and go to the spiritual understanding and awakening. But if you don't use it, we are the misers. And for the next next line in this, it says, Ya yeta daksharam gargi vidya dasma loka praitisa brahmanaha. So, who is a brahmana? A brahmana is one who understands the usage of this uh, material human form and he engages his human form in tapasya and understanding the uh, intricacies of why I am here and trying to get out of why I am not the body to understand these basics of spiritual things such a person who crosses this understands the entire Vedas he can only be called a Brahmana not just by a thread or by birth itself as Gita itself says so Chitan Mahaprabhu preached this so this was based again in this particular uh, aphorism of the Bhradharani Kopanishad wherein the difference between a Krupana and a Brahmana has been clearly espoused. Next comes the aspect which is there, soul and the body, Jada and uh, Chaitana. So, in this, clearly Chaitanya Mahaprabhu also explained that we are not this body, we are different from this Jada Vastu, we are an energy of, in fact, this Chaitanya Charitamrita, generally people think that Chaitanya Charitamrita, this word, this name was given to this uh, literature because it just describes the life history of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Actually, uh, Krishna Sakavara Yogoswami, the author of that, also explains that in a better way. He says, Chaitanya Charita Amrita. Chaitanya is the living force and Charita Amrita, that living force which attained the Amrutatva, uh, that living force which attained the Amrutatva, that description is called Chaitanya Charita Amrita. So, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, uh, all through his life and in every one of his teachings, if you uh, go through those discussions which he had from all these and to his disciples, what he preached, to even to Sanatana Goswami, he preached. One of the Sanatana Goswami actually was a minister in Nawab Hussain Shah's uh, uh, court. And uh, he, so Sanatana Goswami, was actually previously in a born from a Brahminical uh, family, but because of accepting the uh, courtship of or the service of under the Hussein Shah, he was actually extricated from the community of the Brahmins. So, uh, and he was actually, they actually had become Muslims, virtually they were considered as Muslims in the community. But Chaitanya Mahaprabhu said, because they were influenced by Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, Sanatana Goswami, he became, actually had become Sakar Malik, his name had changed also. So he was actually well versed scholar. To him he explains, first thing that he says is, you are not the body, you are the spirit soul. That is anyway, is in every Upanishads, we see that being explained. It says in the Shvetashvita Upanishad, Navadvare Pure Dehi Hamso Lelayata Vahi Vashi Sarvasya Lokasya Stavarasya Charasya Cha. So here, it said, the body consists of nine gates. Just this body which we are all living in, it consists of nine gates. The living entity in its condition stage identifies himself with the body. Uh, so we are all thinking that I am this so and so born and born in this India, born in America, whatever. 
born somewhere so and so. But we are not that. That's the first teaching that Chaitanya Mahaprabhu gave. He to Sanatana Goswami, that's what he tells him. Sanatana Goswami himself accepts the teaching and he surrenders. And later he becomes a Goswami. Goswami means one who has controlled his senses fully and become fully purified. So he travels to later on. He leaves the service of uh, the Nawab and uh, he becomes a, one of the great, he accepts the Babaji style, the sannyasa, mandikan style of life. In Vrindavan, he lives and he authors many, many books. Like I said, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu only wrote only eight verses, but this Sanatana Goswami, Rupa Goswami, all these chief disciples of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu wrote many, many literatures based on the Vedic uh, literatures and propagated this uh, Gaudiya version of civil succession uh, all over India and all over. Now, Prabhupada, the, our Guru, has taken this message all over the world and spread the teachings of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So this is the first teaching which he said that I am not the body. And who can understand this soul? This is from the Kata Upanishad. Shravanayapi bahubir yona labhya Shrinvantopi bahavo yam na vidyu Ascharyo vakta kushalo yas asya labda Ascharyo asya gnata kushalanu shishtaha The fact that atomic soul is within the body of a gigantic animal in the body of a gigantic banyan tree also in the microbic germs and millions and billions of which occupy only an inch of space is certainly very amazing. So, who can understand that I am not the body? Uh, a person who is uh, not just, if somebody will may say, okay, this spirit soul is in the body, but it's very wonderful. Like here, this was the same. It is there in an elephant's body, it's there in a germ's body. So, how is, so it's wonderful, it's a human's body also. So, it's wonderful. So, who can understand that? Only somebody who is next verse actually it comes where he says that only somebody who is an austere, only somebody who has done tapasya, tapasya of uh, giving away the bodily pleasures and pursuing the spiritual thing. So this is what already is told in the uh, uh, Upanishads, which is also uh, promulgated by Chaitanya Mahaprabhu all over in his teachings. Can you go to the next slide? Uh, next, next tenet would be bhakti. Generally, uh, bhakti is one of the most misunderstood uh, terms, I will say, because generally uh, bhakti people think is an emotion. I read in some books also. Uh, they said it's an emotional control or emotional yoga, <laughs> like that. So, rather, actually, bhakti was redefined by Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And that redefinition is also uh, given in the Upanishads. This, go, this is from the Gopala Tapani Upanishad. Uh, among the of course, there are uh, 11 principal, uh, some people let's say 11, 9, 10, so principal Upanishads and the Rahadani Upanishads which are listed in the Muktika Upanishad and one of them is this Gopalatapani Upanishad and in that, it is said here, it defines what is Bhakti. So, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu also said that, he said, Sarvopati Vinir Muktam Tatpara Pena Nirvalam Shikesha Shikena Shevana Bhakti Ruchate See, here, he didn't say emotional nothing, he said, Shikena Shikesha Shevanam Rishika means the senses. So, the senses, when engaged in the service of the Lord of the senses, without, what is that? Sarvopadi vinir muktam, not being attached to any of the upadis, that I am this body, I am so and so, I am a brahmana, whatever, all those, I am a scholar, whatever, all that being fully freed from and serving the Lord of the senses. That is bhakti. See, that's a wonderful definition. And this is also corroborated in this verse here. So, it says here, Bhakti Asya Bhajanam Tad Iha Motropadi Nairashyenmanusmin Mana Kalpanam Yetad Eva Naishkarmyam. So Prabhupada translates this also. Bhakti means devotional service to the Lord, which is free from the desire for material profit either in this life or in the next. Devoid of such inclinations, one should fully absorb the mind in the Supreme. That is the purpose of Maishkarmya. So herein actually the bhakti has been defined by Hindu Upanishads and the very same thread we see in Chaitanya Mahaprabhu preaching us what is bhakti and practically living by that bhakti and showing us how to be the real devotee of the Lord. The next tenet I would like to explain is the Achintya Bheda Bheda Tattva or the inconceivable oneness and difference. Uh, there are many systems of philosophy Advaita, Shuddha Advaita, Dvaita Advaita so so many are there but this is the unique feature of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's teaching 
which is the Achintya Bheda Bheda. What does the Achintya Bheda Bheda mean? So, Prabhupada, our Guru explains that. He says, very simple, putting it in a very simple terms. Achintya Bheda Bheda. Everything is simultaneously one with and different from everything else. The entire creation is the Lord Himself. The world, the whole universe itself is the Lord, but still it is not the Lord. This is also corroborated in the Bhagavad Gita. So, that, that particular aspect is what Chaitanya Mahaprabhu taught. This also was based from the many aphorisms or, or dictums given in the Upanishads. One of such will be from the Chandogya Upanishad. Bahusyam. This is coming from Chandogya Upanishad. Although I am one, I shall become many. So, just for the sake of Ananda, the Lord, who Supreme Lord, expanded into what we are known as the Vivin Amshas of Krishna. Amsha. Krishna says in the Gita, Mamiya Amsha. Uh, so, we are the Amsha of that Lord. In quality, we are one. In quantity, we are not one. So, that is the simultaneous oneness and difference which Chaitanya Mahaprabhu explained. That again was rooted in the Upanishads. It was not something which he manufactured from his own uh, fertile mind, but it is based on the Upanishads. Then, next also is there is another Gopan, in the Gopan Upanishad itself. Eko pisan bahuda yo vabhati. Although the Lord is one, He is present in innumerable hearts as many. In every one of our hearts, just like the sun is there on the one place, but He's there in everybody, everybody's head, He is present. Similarly, the Lord is there in everybody's heart. So, this was the basis of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's Achintya Veda, again rooted in the Upanishads. Next, one more thing Chaitanya Mahaprabhu taught was, of course, that He taught unflinching devotional service to Krishna. Krishna is the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Uh, some people, in fact, I have seen many scholars also saying this, that Krishna is not at all referred to in any uh, Shrutis or in the Vedas. He is not at all referred. Krishna is not mentioned in any scripture, uh, Vedas. Uh, so, rather it is actually mentioned many places. And one of the particular things is from the, again, the Gopala Tapan Upanishad here, which is a shloka from here, which says, Sachidananda Rupaya Krishnaya. This is coming from the Gopala Tapasya Upanishad. And Chaitanya Mahaprabhu based his teachings that how we are supposed to become a servant of the Lord Krishna on this particular uh, dictum of the Upanishads. Next verse in itself, in, the Gop in fact, the Gopala Tapasya Upanishad becomes the basis for many of the aspects of Gaudiya Vaishnava, uh, Sushan, whatever is preached in that, or the philosophy of that. So next was Tam Ekam Govindam. This is also another verse from the Gopala Upanishad. So, in this, also the next verse it says, Satchidananda Rupaya Krishnaya Krishna Karine Namo Vedanta Vedyaya Guruve Buddhi Sakshine. I offer my respectful obeisance to unto Krishna, who is a transcendental form of bliss, eternity, and knowledge. So, this again has its root from the uh, Upanishads. Chaitanya's preaching that we should all serve Krishna, surrender to Krishna is the supreme absolute truth, he is stemming from that. And we see the Srila Prabhupada, our Guru, using this particular term, Krishna, the Supreme Personality of Godhead, he is stemming from this particular Upanishad. Again, this Upanishad verse, Krishna Vai Paramam Daivatam. So, that's when we say, uh, Krishna, the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Godhead means of all the gods and head of such means the Supreme of the gods and Supreme Personality of that is from this particular dictum from the Upanishad. The next is Eko Vashish Sarvaga Krishna Idhyaha. That one Krishna is the Supreme Personality of Godhead and he is worshipable. So this aspect of him uh, uh, promulgating everywhere that we should worship Supreme Lord Krishna is very much based in the Smriti, sorry Shruti, not just in the Smriti. In Smriti of course in the Bhag Bhagavatam in many places in the Bhagavad Gita itself the uh, worship of Krishna was, is given uh, implicitly, explicitly. Here also we see an implicit and explicit uh, direction that we should worship Krishna. This was again from uh, Upanishads and Chaitanya Mahaprabhu propagated this based on this. And the last aspect of tenet which I would like to speak about is what Chaitanya Mahaprabhu preached was chanting of the Hare Krishna mantra. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Rama Hare Hare. Shodashikam nam nam, kali paratropaya So this thing also, the fact that in ISKCON, as you know, we all sing this uh, 
extensively. And Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, when he travelled everywhere as a sannyasi, he used to make everybody chant this Hare Krishna mantra. And you see in many temples also, everywhere this Hare Krishna mantra, this is called the Maha Mantra actually, and is sung everywhere. So this also has its uh, base from the Upanishad itself, it's the Kalisantana Upanishad. And this is what he preached and spread. So broadly the tenets of what Chaitanya Mahaprabhu preached, I have tried to summarize, like I said, it's very difficult to deal with the entire thing. From surrender to spiritual master, to I am not the body, to uh, the aspect of worship of Krishna, to the spreading of specifically chanting the Hare Krishna mantra. All these were based from the, uh, from the Upanishads and the Shrutis and very founded, very firmly rooted in that. And it was not just a sentimental, uh, uh, sometimes people say, is gone or Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, all these sentimentalists. No, they were found, based, firmly rooted in the Vedanta. Not only just firmly rooted, not just philosophers who just sit and discuss and broadly have a view about something and do not practice, but he, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu gave the model for us to practice this Vedanta and he was a, whatever he gave was from fundamentally transcendental knowledge, whatever he gave uh, was uh, based and he was such a uh, great preacher. In fact, the entire whatever in Iskon, whatever we pre preach and spread is also, he is the main uh, root of all that Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is the root for us, the entire root and his, uh, and his teachings are uh, the one sense, the teachings which can bring in a golden age 